person that's driving by honking and saying, I see you in the rut. Good luck. Good luck. Man, if you're in that situation, things change. See, I end up getting my truck towed out. I mean, this dude was country than country gets. He's like, yeah, man, I have to get two trains out there to get that thing up here, so that's going to be about a buck 25 to get that thing out there. Dollar 25? Yeah, man, I got that right now. He's like, no, nah, man, that's about 100 $100, You said a buck 25. Yeah, man, $100, dollars I'm like, why do you say $125? So, I mean, this dude was covering He's like, pulling my truck out and everything. But this is what happened. The next time I go over AB Bridge and I look down, I see this poor guy stuck. I said, I'm going to get him. My friend's like, no, I get stuck. No, nah. see, the thing is, when I, when I got into that rut, when I got stuck, I learned from my mistake. That's good. That's good. Come on. Go. So see, when I was there, when I was in that, that trench, when I was not being able to move, there was something I learned after the fact that I got out of that situation. See, I learned when you're in sand... That if you just let the air out of your tires and let your tires get soft, that tires will crawl on sand than, than better than a narrow, stiff tire will. And so I was like, man, I learned in that situation. See, some of us have gone through ruts, and when we're telling you, hey, you're going down a rut, you're going to get stuck. Look, I'm trying to help you. It's because we've been there. It's because we know what's going to happen. We know the situation. We see things that you don't see, and we're trying to help you. Amen. Amen. Every youth leader in here has been in that rut where they've been stuck, and they're the person that's crossing that bridge saying, I'm going to help that person. They pull off the highway to go down there and help out, even if there's a chance that they may get a little dirty and a little bit of money. See, I went down there. I hooked this dude's truck up to my truck. I'm in that it's trying to dig it out. I'm on my, my belly just digging sand away from his tire, and this guy's looking at me and like, you're some stranger that's in the dirt with me, that's almost got his face all dirty, crawling underneath my mess, and trying to help me out, I don't even know you. See, there's a dedication as a Christian, man, when we see somebody in need, that we need to be willing, we need to be willing to get a little bit dirty, and say, I don't care what it takes, I'm going to make sure you're set free. See, we lose that because of all problems and our things. We, we forget about everyone around us and we get stuck in our own little ruts and we forget about everybody else. Amen. But we can't forget there's other people going through a rut that we've already been through. We're always going to have situations that we get stuck in. There's always going to be an opportunity to get stuck in something. But we have to be willing to help people out of the other little ruts. Man, we can't. We cannot be stuck in the same rut. We have to fight to get out. We have to find our ways out. Call out to your youth leaders. Man, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I can't find a way out. Number three. No, I'm sorry. Hold on. I forgot one more point. Back to two. I love, I love, this, I love this because like, it's one of those things a lot of people don't think. Does anybody know the definition of insanity? Insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. That's insanity. So, in, you know, a lot of times, I remember when I had my truck stuck, I was, I'd put it in reverse, <laughs> put it for me, <laughs> and I mean, I'm just sitting there digging, digging this hole. And I would keep doing it. And, it. and so the definition of insanity is, man, when you do something over and over and over again, and you expect it to be a different outcome. A lot of times we do that in our life. We pray the same way every morning. Lord, just help me I don't punch the man in the face today. Hey Amen. You're awesome. Bless my cereal. Oh, I've got to do my devotion. John 3.16. For God so love the world again. All right, I did my devotion. See, we, we kind of get in this rhythm. And we do the same thing over and over. We, we don't change our prayer life. We don't change the way we read the Word of God. And we get stuck in that rut of, oh man, this is just our normal day. This is how we can go through it. We do a quick prayer in the morning or whatever it may be. Maybe we're not praying. Maybe we're not reading our Bible and we're stuck in this rut. And it's hard, man. It's hard to get that, that time and say, okay, this time's for Jesus. This time's for God. I'm going to do that time. But we get in this situation where we, we get frustrated. I remember when I moved here, and I was like, okay, God, 
God, you called me into ministry, and it didn't happen. It took seven years. I moved here believing that God had said, hey, go to Jacksonville, God, I'm moving into ministry. Yes, I'm going to Jacksonville. And I moved to Jacksonville, left everything I knew, and I get to Jacksonville, and no ministry. We want you to be an intern. A what? Can I just get a job? But see, there was things that I had to go through. But see, I got stuck in a rut. I pray the same every day. I do my 15 minute prayer. Lord, thank you for today. You're awesome. I love you. <sighs> Going about my day. That was it. But see, I was still, I was getting angry with God because I was wanting a different result. I'm like, God, why are you not moving in my life? God, why is nothing changing? I moved here for you, God. I moved to, to help your church. And thinking that I was God's answer to every problem. I got news for you. You're not. If, you, if you're not willing to be used, he'll find someone else to do it. Oh, amen. Come on. He ain't got time to wait. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> so but I would sit there and I would do the same thing. And I'm like, man, why is nothing changing in my life? Seven years go by. And I'm like, dude, something needs to happen. I've been in youth ministry for 10 years. And I'm like, when is my time? When is it going to be for me? When am I going to get my opportunity? But see, Jesus said, Justin, unless you change the way you walk, it will never change on my end. But see, you just go through and we do a checklist. I did that, I prayed, I read my Bible, but it didn't mean anything. I just did it anyway. I held my mom once this month. That was good enough. We do a checklist and we think that something's going to change. And we do something for somebody and we're like, oh, you're going to pay me back. We think it's owed to us. Man, we cannot get stuck in that rut. And if you want something to happen in your life, you have to change things up a little bit. If you're in a situation now and you're not praying, you're like, man, I'm missing out on prayer time. It's hard for me to sit down and pray for a few minutes. Then my challenge to you is that you start trying to make that happen. Maybe it's five or ten minutes, but maybe you're praying today. Maybe you're praying every morning. But yet you just throw out the same prayer every morning just to check it off and say, hey, I pray today. Man, you are missing on the relationship with Jesus. That's why nothing's going to change until you figure out that a relationship takes work. Relationship, if I come to Brittany every day, hey, Brittany, how are you? You're awesome. I love you. We'll talk to you tomorrow morning. And that's it. There will be no relationship. She will like, get out of my face. You're annoying. I don't like you. All right? But I have to tell her all the time, baby, I love you. Girl, you're my girl. I don't want to live with anybody else. You're my, you're my girl. You're better than me. You're better than what I deserve. I tell that all the time because I want to build a relationship. And it's the same way with God. If you don't pursue God, then He'll just wait. Okay? If you don't come after Him, if you don't pursue Him, He's not going to come and twist your arm. Okay, okay, Jesus, I'll follow. Jesus, I'll do it. No, he say, I'm waiting on you. And I hear all the time, people say all the time, I'm just waiting on the Lord. No, you're not. He's waiting on you. Amen. He's waiting on you people all the time. I hear, well, what's going on, man? How's God doing it up? I'm just waiting to see what God's going to do. I mean, I'm in my own trench here and just waiting to see what Jesus is going to do. No. Jesus is waiting on you. It says in the Word that faith without works is what? It's dead. So if you don't put a motion to the faith, then it will never activate. But yet we go through the same thing, through the same routine, and we expect a different result. So technically we're all a little insane. Except my wife. She's amazing. Amen. You get a good opportunity to shout there. Number three, man up and take responsibility. That's good. Can I get real? Ain't nobody's fault but yours. That's another thing I hear all the time, man. And I was telling my leaders today, the leaders in this room, I was telling them today, I said, man, one of my biggest pet peeves is when I hear someone say, I, I'm not going to church there anymore because I'm just not getting fed. What? What do you mean? It's just not deep enough. 
See, it's always someone else's fault. It's never on us. And so here's, the, here's Jesus is asking this guy, hey, do you want to be healed? Well, Jesus, I would have already been healed. This is what he tells him. He says, I would have already been healed, but see, I didn't have someone else. It's someone else's fault. They weren't here for me, Jesus. They didn't come push me in. They weren't there when I needed them. Jesus, I didn't ask you that. Do you want to be healed? Do you want it? Man, I believe that so many times that Jesus said, Do you want to be used? Do you want me to use you? Then he's like, You need to step up, man up, and take responsibility for your own action. I'll tell you something, man, when you, when you learn that, and you say, Man, you know what? The reason I'm where I am is because of me. Like I said earlier, man, every one of us has a story. Every one of us has been through a, a rough time in our life. Every one of us has this thing that we struggle with. We all have problems. And it's so easy, man. It's so easy to say it's someone else's fault. But see, Jesus, Jesus don't want to deal with that. Jesus don't want to deal with somebody else through you. And a lot of times we think that's what it's about. Lord, I would do it, Lord, because you know I am holy and I'm awesome. And I would, but Jesus, they're heathens. And they need you more than I, because I'm right. And so we, we so quickly will push that blame. And Jesus is like, man, I need to deal with issues in your life. Scripture tells us, man, you know, how many of you have heard the scripture where it says that you're quick to judge a splinter in someone else's eye, but yet you have a plank in yours. So you got this, you see somebody and you're like, you see that over there? I can see it from here. You got a little splinter right up. A little, a little something going on in their life. Meanwhile, you're walking around with a big old two-by-four. Those are problems. Amen to that. You got more issues than anybody else knows what to do with, and you're talking about someone else's little issue. Amen. Come on, let's get it. See, you are way too wrapped up into somebody else's story that you don't want to deal with what's really going on. Amen. How are you going to move forward? How are you going to identify the issues? How are you going to get out of the rut if you're not willing to take the responsibility to deal with your own stuff? 